bag. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome once again to Spicy Talk with Omadia. As usual, Saturdays are the days I, you know, bring out time to do my house chores and prepare anything. So guys, join me on this cassava peeling vlog. I want to process my cassava. Guys, I get my cassava here from uh, Brazil. They have uh, a lot of cassavas and then I got some in this bag and I'll be showing you guys. They have big cassavas, very big. Not the cassava you're thinking about. <laughs> Not cassava, I mean the real cassava. <laughs> the cassava. Mm. Okay. If you are just joining us, consider subscribing. This is the family you want to be in. You want to be with. Okay, let's see. Woo. This one is how many inches? <laughs> These cassavas are large, they are quite big. Can you guys see it? See how big they are. Like they are massive. Oh my god. Look at this. Look at this. This is quite huge. This is big. And I'll be processing my cassava with this. If I have time, I'll take you guys along as I prepare the fufu after uh, fermenting my cassava yeah I'll take you guys along oh, they are quite big so time to peel why is this cassava looking small Looking smaller than the one I packed in the bag. <laughs> oh man. Mm. This is big. And it's so white. The cassava is so white, guys. I don't know if you can see this. Like, it's so white. Unlike the last um, the last one I bought last week. Yeah, last week. It's a bit yellowish. It's not like this one. It's a bit yellowish like um, custard, you know the custard yellow here. Yeah. And I didn't really like it. My my customer said the cassava is colored. Well, it, it depends on the species. Right? But I prefer this very whitish one. When you prepare fufu with it, it will be looking like pounded yam. Like undo pounded yam or benue pounded yam. So guys, tell me, do you, those of you living abroad, those of you living abroad, do you get your cassava? Where do you get your cassava from and do you get to process it yourself or you buy it already processed? Tell me, because it seems like I'm the only one <laughs> making this here in Fortaleza. I don't think there's any other person processing cassava at home. I have to be careful with my hands. I had a cut a couple of days ago. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, guys. As you're coming in, give me a thumbs up. Give this Anambra baby thumbs up. You know we are numbers, we love cassava, we love apple. <laughs> I know it was I've heard me talk about apple a couple of times, but it's my favorite actually. It's an anambra babe. You know, I can't do without apple. And my husband, my husband loves apple a lot too, so apple and bitalif soup happens to be his favorite meal. Like we can have this all week. <laughs> I have it always so this one will just last us for how long baby huh? my DOP my Ebu D <laughs> he's smiling behind camera as usual my Ebu D the man that loves eating acne acne sweet at this cassava they are big old. Oh. 
So guys, as a young lady, as a young girl, I remember going to the farm all the time with my dad especially. We used to farm cassava a lot. Then we hated peeling cassava. Oh, it was so much work. Because my father would bring it with pickup. You know this 504? Yeah, pigeons. Who we'll peel cassava from morning till night, God. <laughs> That's where we'll have our, our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. See, yeah, weekends. It's not funny. Yo. Didn't grow up with a silver spoon at all. So, my dad will we'll go to the farm and we we'll harvest the cassava with the workers. Then we'll come back home and start peeling. Though we have workers, but my parents don't believe in us just sitting down while others, you know, do the work. So we are brought up to do all manner of chores, like anything at all. We are brought up to do it. And that's what really helped me, you know, as an adult today. That's really nothing. Just show me. I can do Honestly, and the last time I traveled home to go see my dad, we still went to the farm. <laughs> we still went to the farm to harvest cassava. Hmm. On our way, I was already tired. I only went once. When my dad called me again, I just told him that I'm tired. I bet just, just call your work as if we should go. You know, not because I'm lazy, but you see, eh? One more person don't grow a lot tired. <laughs> it's not always easy. But I, I, I enjoy processing this myself at home. It has really helped me because this is one major food we eat. Apple and uh, Gary. Gary not all the time, but you see Apple being my husband's favorite, so I have to always prepare this. It's not easy to eat up with steady and still manage your weight so, so <laughs> from time to time i go back to my water fast i still do my water fast they are so big i can't even hold <laughs> i can't even hold the cassava properly yeah, it's so big it's so big i'm i'm struggling to hold it the long i saw big cassava tubers like this so ones are I think I have to hold it like yam. <laughs> it's quite big, too big for my hand. Hold it like yam. That will kill ya. I am that village girl that will process cassava in Brazil. Yes, that village girl. Village Oma dear. Oh gosh. <laughs> this one is so big. Struggling with it. Wow. I want to use my big my big knife to cut it into bits. So I have to cut this thing, this cassava into into tiny bits. Because it's too big so that it can ferment fast, otherwise this can be here and it's so strong. It can be here for one week without fermenting. Just in case um if you want to try this at home, look for bicarbonate of soda if you are not sure of the cassava fermenting. Because most cassavas from home, I made a video. Uh, when I was starting my channel on this 
so I can put it out for you. Look for bicarbonate of soda and add to the cassava after washing. It will help uh, the cassava to ferment fast. Otherwise, uh, some of this cassava will stay for long without fermenting. Especially cassava outside the shores of Africa. Our soil is very good. So I, if you don't trust these ones here, you can just add a little bit of And um, now I will just uh, put them into this. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we're done, guys. All right, the next is uh, to cover it up properly and then keep it in a very quiet place where I won't have to be moving it around. Then, in two days' time. We'll check it and see if it has fermented and then we'll filter. All right, guys, see you in two days' time. <laughs> mm. Hello, guys. So here we are. And this is day three that I have uh, soaked this uh, cassava to ferment. And as you can see, oh, my God, it has really fermented. Guys, can you see? So first thing first is... It's smelling jeez the water stinks <laughs> so I have to drain this dirty water out I have to let this dirty water go out otherwise we'll end up with smelling 
cassava oh really fermented so well and you know funny enough i didn't add back bicarbonate of soda to this uh yeah i didn't add because it looked to me like a very good cassava so i didn't bother adding bicarbonate to it oh, i should have filtered this yesterday that's really fermented so we let out this smelling water let it out So here we go. Then I have to start filtering. It really fermented so well. Woo! Almost losing the food. So guys, can you see how I'm doing it? Sweetie, come closer so that you see it clearly. Can you guys see? See how well fermented the cassava is. Africans love cassava a lot. Fufu. I know Ghanaians love it, Cameroonians love it, and Nigerians, of course, they love it. But we all have different ways of preparing it. So I don't know if you're Ghanaian or uh, from Cameroon or any other part of African country. Can you let me know in the comment section how you prepare your cassava? They call it yoka, right? Yeah, yoka. So you let me know how you prepare it. So I get to throw it through the trash here. And it's so white. That's one thing I love about this cassava. The last one I processed was a bit colored, like yellowish. Yes. So, but this one. It's very whitish and well fermented, so I think I got a good deal. You know, when you're living abroad, you just have to find a way to process your food, otherwise, you end up eating. Things you're not really used to. It's not as if it's bad or it's wrong to eat food, but then you don't also forget your root. You don't forget where you come from. You don't forget your your native food. So that's why I process most of my foods. I look for the raw materials around, and as it is here in Fortaleza, where we are based, we don't have African African shop or African market. So it's kind of difficult to get African food. So what I do is I go to their local market and source for, you know, these foods, process them myself. So we'll be able to feed well. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have women at dinner. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be, we'll be very hungry. We end up eating only rice and uh, farinha. No. So, and um, farinha, you know, farinha is processed flour, processed white flour. I don't really like it. I'm not a flour. Person. So I, I don't like flour. That's why I do my thing myself, so I can give my husband good food. Yeah, I can give him good food, and when it's time to go renew my bride price, he will do that. Baby, she, you don't want to talk to me again. <laughs> this man is always silent behind the behind the camera. <laughs> Okay. Baby, are you shy? Hmm? Are you shy? Guys, let me gist you while, while we're doing this. Let me gist you. Um, do you know those from Ekulobia and Oko? <laughs> My husband told me this. He said, what they call a uh, cassava fufu in their place is Mbaduga. So, the first time I prepared cassava here for him when I got to this country. 
He was shocked. He was so happy. And then he said, Mbadu, Mbadu ga sukwada hoganya. Wait, Mbadu ga sukwada hoganya. Anya waga rando. I laughed so loud because he said that's how they they they, they say they call Mbaduga and they know it means that uh, cassava or apple you say it was cast we've surrounded you now to devour you kind of <laughs> so he said I'm not he's laughing behind the camera he's, he's practically holding himself from busting out oh my god so, I am Wagga Rando. Hi, baby. <laughs> I wish my mom, my mom was here to see what I'm doing. I know she'd be very happy to see me processing this. Uh, God rest her soul. Let me see how white is this one. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to do something about this is food. I know some of you must be wondering what I'm doing with all this. I know some of you must be wondering what I do with all this cassava. Well, I like I told you guys the last time, I run a small food business and uh, supply this to my few customers. They are not much, quite all right, but then um, I do this on weekly basis, especially weekend supplies and. Uh, Mostly African foods to our African brothers and sisters here. So they get to place order when they need it, and I quickly process and send to them. Maybe we need to get another one. So this is the second part because I have to soak them in a different container. It requires a lot of water. So one container will not be enough for it. I have to get the dirty water out. And if you are watching up to this very moment, consider subscribing and wait till the end because I'll show you how to prepare this fufu. <laughs> you want to enjoy correct to tarapu, I'll show you at the end. When I'm done processing it, I will probably show you how to prepare it. Just in case you are 
you want to consider preparing it yourself at home and you are missing fufu apple just watch till the end because i'll show you how to achieve that at the end of this video this is a detailed video detailed So now the dirty water is off, we have to start filtering this too. There we go. You know, in the villages, you know how this is done. We take it to the stream and wash it, then the stream, so you have a lot of water. And then they actually soak it in a sack and keep by the bank of the river too. So when it's fermented, they wash it there and bring home. So who says you cannot process your cassava anywhere in the world? This is Brazil. And I am processing my cassava here in Fortaleza, Brazil. <laughs> oh my god. I get to enjoy enjoy this anywhere in the world. Anywhere I find myself, I cannot leave my food behind.
you have a bigger basin or something larger it, it to really help drain out the water properly guys um i may do a voice note but just in case this is not coming out um you make sure you don't add so much water make sure you don't add a lot of water so you can see the consistency now with this you don't have to pound your fufu at home so you don't disturb your neighbors okay and uh, to get a very big mortar here i don't know but with this method you get the same result as same with the one you use the uh, mortar to pound so just watch closely as i do this you let it cook while you keep stirring As you can see, it's already beginning to form. You see, it's cooking already. So, I just keep stirring.
so guys as you can see this is ready like perfect let me show you guys the consistency take a look oh very hot oh my god it's very hot <laughs> so we're done and you have your fufu ready good we're done well done, I want to hear. Thank you, sweetheart. You finally spoke. Finally spoke up. Because Aku is ready, Aku, yeah? yeah? Because Aku is ready, you can, you can speak now. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Good to be you are excited. So. Guys, can you see this? See how hot, steaming hot it is. Hope you enjoyed it from start to finish. I'm so excited to share this with you. Now, all I need to do is to get my soup ready. Ah, so hot. Mmm. Mmm. No odor. No odor, it's not like the apple you know. This is apple with a touch. <laughs> this is apple that went to Harvard. So, if you want to join me, wash your hand. Let's devour this with Vitali soup or any of our native soup. Bye, guys. <laughs>